world's biggest gaming convention, Call of Duty, and world's shortest Nintendo Direct. Let's talk. What up, viewers? What up? What up? Today is Saturday, August 29th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Like I said, big thing that happened this week was the world's biggest gaming convention has gone digital, and so we had Jeff Keighley doing one night, uh, yeah, one night live, and uh, yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really cool event. And let's break down some of the titles, but not all the ones um, that were showcased. Uh, I kind of like picked the ones that I thought uh, that kind of stood out to me. They started with Call of Duty, but I want to kind of leave that towards. We had more news at the beginning of the week. They started off with Call of Duty showing um, a little bit of like a kind of like a, a cinematic trailer um, for what to expect in the game. And then after that, um, they had Doom Eternal. They were talking about all of the, D, you know, some of the DLC that's coming to Doom Eternal. Um, it kind of got me thinking, do I want to go back and, and play some of the Doom Eternal? Uh, do I want to play Doom, Doom Eternal again? And, you know, I was kind of had mixed feelings about that. But it was cool to see more content coming out of uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, Dragon Age 4 was, or, or at least the next Dragon Age game was, was an interesting sh showing. Um, they really were talking about like very detailed about like the developer and what's going on. And, and they just wanted to like really particular and they didn't have like a fully fleshed out game. So they just went into very particular details on what combat's going to look like, what the game's going to be like, um, and what, you know, what this kind of series is meant to, to fans. Um, we haven't seen this since I think the Game Awards 2018 or so when they just had like a small teaser image. Um, so it's been a while, but it looks like they're they're working on it. So for all the Dragon Age fans out there, uh, the next one is being worked on, but I don't think there was a date given for that one. So um, a few more titles and then they showed World of Warcraft finally got its big reveal. The you know, they've been slowly trickling out uh, information about the the covens and and what what the content means but i thought the interesting part was like the story i didn't know realize the story was like everybody in azeroth is dying going to this this underworld and that's where everything's going to take place and you got to make packs with these big i knew about the covenants but you got to make packs with them um and they showed their their uh like short trailer or uh their short story kind of video narrative um and and that was really cool. I I I like these like before expansions. I like the kind of the slow trickle of like cinematics. Um, and this one was all about Uther and how Uther died at the hands of Arthas and how he's kind of being raised to this like paragon of of justice. Um, I thought the story kind of echoes Diablo three, so I kind of tweeted about that because it seemed very familiar. They have like these great celestial beings and they're all broken into casts and and uther is going to be this this creature of vengeance and so it shows like uther you know being there when arthas dies and then like casting his soul i guess to like the great nether or something um yeah so it was it kind of showed the corruption of of a, of a fan favorite so um i'm excited for world of warcraft i don't know if this is enough to get me into it but i'm really excited to hear more about um the story Pausing for a brief moment, we, we got a new Warhammer game, and I'm a huge Warhammer fan. Um, and, you know, I didn't quite understand what was going on, and I still don't know much about what the gameplay is going to be like. But I saw the Warhammer signal, and, I was, and, you know, all of a sudden my ears perked up. Um, and it's an Age of Sigmar game, which, as a fan of the older, more classic Warhammer, Age of Sigmar kind of, I think, ruined fantasy. But um, not to get too political, but... Uh, yeah, so the new Warhammer game, I am excited for uh, how much they do with the Warhammer IP. I just think like every other every other gaming convention, I see a new Warhammer game coming out. So I'm excited to see more and more Warhammer content. Um, but uh, I'm not particularly excited about this one just because I don't have much of a relationship with Age of Sigmar uh, as a concept uh, for those tabletop fans. Um, but Warhammer Stormguard is coming out eventually. We got more details on Crash 4. Um, nothing too big, no big highlights out of this, but they talked to Toys for Bob. Uh, they talked to the developers, and uh, they, they just keep you know building up hype and awareness uh, around Crash 4 that comes out on October 2nd. Uh, 
Outriders. I think there was more news earlier in the week about Outriders, but I kind of saw this at, at One Night Live. Uh, Outriders, I think, is is slowly starting to become the game I'm going to play in Q4. Um, you know, considering it's very you know third person shooter cooperative, so I'm kind of getting more and more excited about that than I would be for like Godfall or the upcoming Avengers title. So. Um, I, I still think there's probably something missing. There's I feel like the story is probably going to be kind of meh, but um, as long as it's a cooperative shooter I can play with friends, then it might just be the game I'm playing this summer. And they had released um, the most recent class, so they have all four classes. The most recent one's called the, uh, the, the Technomancer, um, which is funny because I think this is the same company that made the Technomancer video game from two or three years ago. Um, so I thought that was a uh, I was really cool, and I'm I'm kind of getting slowly trying to learn more and more information about Outriders. Of course, Fall Guys season two was was talked about. Uh, Fall Guys has taken the world by storm, and so the se the second season is definitely of interest. And so they got to we got to see more uh, maps that they're gonna bring. We get to see the theme of it all. It's got a very medieval theme, so you've got me sucked in right there. Any chance I can be. Uh, any chance I have to be a, a knight or a dragon or a witch or a viking like I'm I'm all about the kind of medieval theme that they're going on there was a lot of like maps with like drawbridges on them and you're like pushing boxes in order to get over these like ramparts so I'm really excited for Fall Guys season two um, I don't know if there's a date associated with this so I gotta finish up my battle pass um, but I am excited for Fall Guys season two and hopefully they kind of keep keep this kind of momentum going um, you know, if we can get regular, if we can get regular seasons, get more maps and, you know, rather than having everything be all at once when the season comes up, hopefully there's mid season stuff that, that gets trickled out, more maps get added so that, you know, every six weeks or eight weeks is, is, um, is good. But I think you need a slow trickle of content as well in order to maintain the game. But I'm excited. I continue to play Fall Guy almost every day. So looking forward to Fall Guy season two. Medal of Honor, where they had they had uh, Vince Sampella uh, of Respawn come up and and kind of give a give a he kind of just talked in his backyard. It was kind of an interesting, um, but he sh but what what he what he showed was a new Medal of Honor VR game, and I think I think a lot of companies are trying to. I'm I'm really excited to see, you know, VR coming coming to itself, and a lot of companies putting more and more investing more and more money into making a like super immersive VR experience. Um, and, you know, Medal of Honor, I think is a, is a good, is a good place to start. And, and what I saw of the content looks, you know, kind of harkens to that Half-Life Alex, which I think is like the gold standard for immersive VR kind of shooter. Um, so I think this could be up to that, up to that par. So um, looking forward to seeing more about Medal of Honor. I don't remember what consoles it was coming to or which, which headsets it was coming to, but um, I think actually, I think it was exclusive to Oculus. I'm not quite sure. Um, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. And you know, I'm looking forward to potentially getting PlayStation VR with PlayStation Five. But I, you know, I'm still on the fence on which VR rig I should have set up. So if you have any comments on which one I should get, tell me down below. Last but certainly not least, they showed more Ratchet and Clank uh, Rift Apart content. Um, but this one. This was, you know, from Insomniac was was quite eye opening. They showed the whole rift mechanic. Um, they showed these kind of uh, you're being able to like transport from like one side of the map to the other, like seamlessly. Um, it was really cool. It was like 10 minutes of gameplay, um, really exciting. And you know, I've only pl I only played the last the last Ratchet and Clank game, um, but I got really hooked on that one, and so I don't have much of the nostalgia. But I am excited to play kind of the next Ratchet and Clank game. And this one looks really good. And uh, I'm excited to see how much of the technology, they kind of talked about how like the haptic feedback from the DualSense um, is gonna interact with gameplay. And Ratchet and Clank has always been about having a smorgasbord of guns that all have different and unique characteristics and trying to make, and, and having a super sensitive um, controller is going to contribute to this overall gaming experience which sounded really cool. So I'm looking forward to Rift Apart coming later this year. They didn't confirm the date because I assume it's, they did say it's a launch title or license. Anytime I hear like launch window, 
kind of get nervous about what does that actually mean because if the game you know if the console comes out end of october or you know sometime in november launch window you know depending on how you define that could be early 20 you know january 2021 that could still be the quote launch window um so anytime i hear that i just get a little bit nervous but i am looking forward to ratchet and clank rift apart and that kind of rounds out the gamescom hopefully that was enough let me know if i missed anything or if there's anything that you liked or didn't like about gamescom um i did think that you know final thoughts i did think that two hours was kind of pushing it it felt like this content could have been condensed down to maybe 90 minutes um and it was on my you know on the west coast this was my lunch break um so watching this during that you know kind of ate into my my time but uh but yeah i uh you know i noticed i know that there's difficulties with putting on these kind of productions and hopefully they were taking that time to make sure the connections were all stable and and they and they look you know they were up to par so um it was really cool getting all that together and making sure that this kind of thing can still happen even in a, a COVID 19 world so going back to what I was saying about Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty had announced uh, the official title of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War uh, earlier in the week. Um, they announced that their official SKU plan, which was $60 for the base game for current gen, $70 for the current gen slash next gen version, um, and then like $90 for like the all in next gen plus, you know, season pass um, kind of content. So um so they announced that earlier this week and then at gamescom the first they were the first title at gamescom they kind of showed uh like a five minute cinematic of kind of what a quest briefing is gonna or what a what a mission briefing is gonna look like and they brought in ronald reagan uh which i thought was kind of interesting it, you know it had a weird uncanny valley look to it um so it wasn't quite you know it just looked a little weird and then the idea of in our current political strife bringing in you know reagan which is like held as the you know the king of conservatism or the republican party um just thought was a was a was a strange you know was a strange choice to make but you know if they're going for accurate for the time they bring them in and i read a i read a cool think piece about um you know putting reagan uh in your game and and you know it talked a little bit about like game politics and the the author said like they would if even if you put you know obama or kennedy into your video game like people would still criticize that and so from that same lens they're criticizing you know reagan being in the game but but anyway if you're looking forward to the next call of duty game it's coming out on november 13th which i think is the latest a call of duty title has ever come out and i think it's going to be it's like two weeks before black friday so um if you can wait two weeks you're going to get your game you know 10 to 20 dollars off um actually some retailers well i mean it's call of duty but some retailers don't allow you to discount your game uh so close after launch so um that's a little inside baseball but if you're looking forward to call of duty black ops cold war that's not enough words for your game title um, then it's coming out on November 13th. We also had the world's smallest Nintendo Direct, even though, yes, it was a Nintendo Direct Mini, uh, so we know that these are going to be short, but this was like 11 minutes. Um, it was called the Partner Showcase, and so they were just kind of talking about partner titles that were coming to the Switch. Um, they started off with Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, which was like a rhythm game set in Kingdom Hearts, and I thought, Oh, it was interesting. I I don't know that the, there was deep con you know there's deep gameplay in there. Rhythm games don't really uh, speak to me, but um, it was cool to see more Kingdom Hearts content coming out. Uh, for all those who there's like fourteen hundred billion uh, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts games, so just add this one to the list. Um, but you know if you're into rhythm games and Kingdom Hearts, this can be the game for you. Uh, another game that I thought was really interesting was called Fuser. Um, and this was kind of a surprise for me. It was like a it was like a DJ simulator. And the way it was kind of being explained was you and like a group of friends, you're like messing around with titles and you're choosing when to like DJ mix. It was really cool, like gamification of the the, the, the DJ kind of process, which already has kind of like an, a, you know, a, a, a game 
you know culture around it because it's really much like you know timing and and switching things and matching beats um so i thought that was was a really cool concept for a game um i don't aspire to be a dj but um getting a few friends together to try and see who can mix together the the best tracks via a video game and get responses to that and getting feedback in the game and as well as from friends i thought it was a really cool concept so i uh, look for a fuser coming in the future and then another big thing coming out of uh, the Nintendo Direct Mini was Just Dance 21 was finally announced, or at least it has its, it had its um, uh, playlist fully out, and it announced its uh, release date, which is November 12th, so right before Call of Duty. Sounds like a great time. I mean, not that there is much overlap between those audiences, um, but uh, right before Call of Duty, and uh, it's probably coming out on literally every console because that's how Just Dance is released. But November's starting to get a little full, so um, probably going to be more coming out of Gamescom. More games are going to be stuffed into November because we've had kind of a dry summer. And um, and the kind of COVID stuff has kind of pushed stuff um, later into the year um, or into next year. So looking forward. Or Just Dance comes out in, on November 12th um, in a very busy, just like, four or five pretty big titles coming out in like a week with Assassin's Creed and Cyberpunk and Call of Duty and now Just Dance. Like those are some big, those are some big market disrupting games. So uh, all of those coming out in a week is going to be, uh, you know, quite, quite a choice to make in, in November. Like I said, Fall Guys has taken the world by storm and uh, Media Tonics and Digital, um, uh, Devolver Digital have kind of, released more information about the sales and downloads of the game kind of touting the big records that they're setting so they've set they've now said that they've sold 7 million units on steam um, but there's also free users so that doesn't really encapsulate all of the players on steam um, and they said that it is the most downloaded ps plus game which i i don't know if prior to this i know i remember rocket league being one of the big ps plus games and i don't remember what the numbers were for rocket league downloads um, but you know, the fact that this is the most downloaded PS plus game ever, uh, kind of speaks to the success and, you know, giving it away for free for the entire month of August was great move. Cause that's going to get you your player base. And I'm pretty sure most of them are monetized for $5 at least to get that, uh, get that awesome pirate skin. Um, so, you know, congrats to fall, fall guys, media tonic and, uh, D uh, devolver digital the games doing great. And I can't wait to play more. Like I said, when, uh, talking about season two rumors in the games industry i know i know hold hold your applause rumors in the games industry um there is a super switch potentially coming or at least that's what i'm calling it um a more powerful version of the switch could be coming in 2021 um and you know i think a lot of people have kind of been asking for that i think the twi the switch has always been you know kind of looked down upon on its like you know 30 30 frames per second and it's you know somewhere between 720 and 1080p um gameplay depending on whether or not you're docked or not um so i think people have kind of accepted that the switch is a low powered version of a of a modern console and i think a lot of people own it as a secondary console um as opposed to their primary one um but i'm very excited for a a more powerful version of the switch I, you know being able to play you know at 60 frames per second or I don't know how you get 4K technology into, uh, you know, a console that I can pick up and carry around. If it's a little bit bigger, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be against that because, um, you know, I feel like I could hold a little bit, uh, a little bit heavier of a system. Um, but you don't want it to be too heavy. All of a sudden, you get to like an iPad with all of a sudden with the the Joy Cons on the side and. I don't even know how joy cons would work if the cons if the screen got bigger maybe it just gets wider um and i hope we don't lose the ability to pick it up and take it everywhere because uh much like everybody else i uh play my switch in the bathroom <laughs> uh but no I, I really would like the ability to to take my switch uh wherever i go uh when, especially on vacation or or you know just when i'm leaving the house um so hopefully it's still transport transportable, but we can get a slightly more powerful version. Or maybe technology has just evolved in the last couple, you know, in the last three years that they now can do something more powerful at, you know, even while maintaining the same size as the current switch. So I'm looking forward to getting more information on that. And uh, you know, Nintendo, you've got a you've got someone who's gonna wait in line to get that, because 
I definitely want a more powerful switch. As uh, as this week kind of proved, the video games awards are still happening. Um, so you know, Jeff Keighley kind of showed that this kind of event can still kind of happen in this COVID world. Um, I bet the the nature of the video games awards, like having it at the the Kodak Theater um, or the I think it was at the Microsoft Theater actually, um, but having it you know at at a single location probably isn't going to happen. But still having the interactivity and the games and the awards presented. Um, was kind of shown in the uh, One Night Live, although it was weird that there were like, this is the great, like IGN was like, this is the best video game and the best action game. I, I, someone tell me, explain to me why there were like announcements for the best whatever action title uh, at the opening night lives. I, I just didn't understand that part. But back to it. I'm a huge fan of the video game awards. I watch them every year. I do contests with friends and coworkers. Um, to see who can guess the most. Um, so I'm really excited to hear that the video game awards are still happening. And I think, you know, part of part of why Jeff Keighley was involved was kind of proving out that this could still happen. And the thing that events like One Night Live and um, the video game awards can still happen in the COVID world. So looking forward to that. Talking about video games that actually launched and that are actually here and now, Wasteland 3 is finally out. It launched, uh, I think, yesterday uh, on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, I was looking forward to it all uh, all year. I was, I think, it got pushed away from an original May release date to now where it was in August, but it's here now. It's got an 85 Metacritic, um, so you know, pretty good game. If you're into these kind of turn-based isometric RPGs, um, it, it's it should be the game for you. If you're a Wasteland 2 fan, if you're an, an in Exile fan is the developer behind the game. Um, they're known for kind of the Wasteland games and some of the Bard ta- the Bard's Tale games, uh, especially the most recent one, Bard's Tale Four. Um, so they know a lot about their RPGs. It you know Wasteland is always you know Wasteland is kind of the progenitor for like the Fallout series, and so anybody who's like a big fan of Fallout, like I am, uh, is definitely gonna love the series, and I'm looking forward to playing it uh, on Game Pass. So that should be fun. Uh, Witcher Monster Slayer, a a Witcher AR game or Pokemon Go like game, um, got an announcement this week. Um, yeah, I I kind of I you know it was kind of kind of cool. We just got like a trailer for it um, of what you know w- bringing Witcher into like this Pokemon Pokemon Go AR gameplay should be pretty cool. Um, the one part I have is is like what am I gathering? I feel like. I feel like Pokemon Go lent itself to kind of that, um, it kind of lends itself very much. I think it, I mean, it's the perfect, it's the perfect breed of, of concept and execution where Pokemon Go is all about getting outside and collecting Pokemon. Whereas the Witcher series is more about like going out, collecting bounties, I guess, for specific, um, for, for specific monsters. But what am I going to do with the money I get from the bounties? Like I'm trying to, understand what the gameplay loop was and this is the just initial speculation on it so you know take everything i'm saying with a grain of salt but i'm very curious as to you know what the actual gameplay is going to be they kind of showed uh you know bringing up the monster and how you're going to fight it and i wonder what the combat's going to look like if it's like a series of button presses like um like uh harry potter uh wizards unite or if there's something else to it, maybe I have to shake my camera or something to do something cool or, you know, drawing one of the four Witcher signs would be very kind of cool. It's like trying to get that hand motion and stuff like that. It's going to be really cool. So looking forward to seeing more on Witcher, Witcher Monster Slayer. Um, I don't think the I don't think the AR genre has, uh, has, you know, has fully reached its market capacity, but uh, I keep hearing more and more about Pokemon Go stuff and couple of my friends are, are into uh, Wizards Unite, so, but I still think there's more of a market. I don't know that it's, I hope they're not benchmarking it on Pokemon Go, because I don't, I think that was kind of uh, bottled lightning, and I don't know if the, you can re- replicate that, but uh, hopefully there's realistic expectations around this, and uh, yeah, Witcher, and I'm always excited to see more Witcher content. Uh, can't wait for uh, Witcher Season 2, um, starting to see some of the stuff trickle in, uh, you know, posted from by Henry Cavill and and how 
filming during COVID times is, is weird, but anyway, I digress. Last but certainly not least, the the Gollum game that we've been slowly getting more and more information about. It's a it's supposed to be a next gen console game coming to PC uh, and next gen in 2021. They've we've gotten a little bit of details, but this week we got a trailer, and you know we don't really hear Gollum talk, but it kind of shows the setting of like this stealth kind of game in Mordor um, and what that's gonna look like. So, you know. Huge Lord of the Rings fan. I'm excited to see more content. Um, I think it's going to be weird when you hear Gollum's name, or when you hear Gollum, but you don't hear Andy Serkis. I think a lot of people, I think everyone kind of grew up listening to or, or you know, knowing that Andy Serkis plays the voice of Gollum. And so, you know, having that disconnect is going to be the same kind of disconnect you get when you see Avengers, the video game, and, you know, the real world Avengers that we've gotten to know over the past, you know, two decades. Um, so not hearing Andy Serkis's voice come out of Gollum is going to be a little bit weird, but as long as you got a raspy voice and you can switch between Smeagol and Gollum, should be fun gameplay. And, uh, I'm also, I'm also excited to run around Mordor more. So, um, looking forward to the Gollum game. There's a trailer and I'll have a description, or I'll have a link down in the description below. That's it for the week. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy this content. If you do follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend. And I hope you have a super day. Bye.